What happens when a child turns 4? We enroll them in a school and for the next 12 years, the child learns what the adults have decided the child must learn. In this episode, I speak with Amit Sriyam, the founder of a community learning center in Hyderabad called A Little Grove. We challenge conventional notions of schooling, talk about agency and freedom in learning, and also talk about love and healing. Let's dive in. Hi everyone. So today we are going to have a conversation with Amit, uh, who Professor Ankur also mentioned in his interview. I am super excited for this conversation uh, because I have met Amit just yesterday, but sitting in his session, I was genuinely very inspired and I felt like there was a lot to learn from his journey, what he has done, etc. So Amit, so if you could just introduce yourself for everyone's benefit. Hi, I am Amit. <clears throat> I graduated, I'm, I'm an engineer by degree. I graduated in 2008 from IIT Madras and um, um, since 2011 I have been spending my time working with children. So, I mean that's a brief introduction but a little longer introduction would be that when I was a kid, I wanted to become, I mean, one thing that I remember is that I wanted to become a monk. One thing that constantly troubled me was why is there suffering all around? Why is it that people suffer? Why is there so much of inequality that exists? Um, so I was going through with the flow. My parents told me that you, you know, you want to work. This is something that disturbs you. So you go and become an IS officer and... Uh, you be, that's one route uh, where you can bring about a change and so I ended up going to IIT. Unfortunately, I was not, it was, the reason was not that I was so much interested in engineering or, um, yeah. And, and then um, um, after IIT again, like, you know, got placed and was working in finance sector for about a year when I decided that I need to I, I need to pause, I, I need to see what I really want to do. This is not something that I really want to do. If I leave my job, there are 100 others waiting to come and take it, but but do something that I, I feel alive doing. And at that time, till date, it is quite clear, the one thing that I really love doing is spending time with children. I think there was no second doubt about it. it they, they, they make me feel alive. They heal me um, when I feel down. Things. So I, I thought I'll uh, start a school. So I thought I'll start a school. I left and I started going around and seeing different uh, um, practices, different, uh, selected some of the good schools who are trying to uh, bring about some kind of change and things and went. Where all did you go? So one of the schools that I visited was here in Ahmedabad, Riverside School. Yeah. Then uh, I went and uh, saw Agastya Foundation. These are uh, some of the places that when you put on internet, these are the ones that pop up. And so I went there and I learned. But, um, but then the journey continued. And from here, I got connection about some other place. And I started visiting and seeing places that were not there on internet, that were existing and doing amazing work. Uh, but relatively unknown. And like I wanted to, I also went and spent time uh, staying in monasteries, Tibetan monasteries, trying to learn about uh, what Buddha really taught and also seeing how children study there. So I spent two years traveling. The fact that I traveled, my travel was not so much dependent on money. The fact that uh, so I used to basically, I would come to know about an organization and I would write to them and say that uh, you are doing fabulous work and I would want to come and uh, learn from you. And uh, uh, could you just give me a place to stay and food to eat? And I would come and I, uh, in return, if you want me to volunteer or do something, then I would do. And that's how I spent two years. Uh, somewhere I would volunteer. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, going 
two months at this place and two months at that place. I volunteered for two months at a Tibetan school, mm. uh, teaching children science and taking them out. <laughs> uh, and uh, and like I said, monastery and, and spent some time in villages. I spent some time in Udaipur uh, at Shikshantar. Mm. And um, and and it was it was it was so nice because you get to learn so many things. You get to learn about people. You get to see that people uh, are also so generous and so kind. Uh, uh, they would offer me best of the things that. While traveling, I, I I was kind of getting convinced that I want to start a space which is unlike a school, unlike a school because. Um, See, one thing that I, one one thing that disturbs me about schools per se is that that's becoming the only mode of education, and schooling is becoming synonymous with learning and education. These words, but that need not be. Schooling schools are doing wonderful job, and we could we could see it during the COVID times when people children were spending times at home, they would yearn to go out and. Schools have been able to provide that kind of thing, no? where so many children are coming together and they are spending time and 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 and, and, and spending their childhood slightly okay. happily. But unfortunately, schooling is also becoming a little bit more stringent. We um, children are also coming under stress uh, because of so many assignments and exams and all. But one particular thing that uh, one particular question that I had in mind was that uh, the schools are structured in such a way that a child is never asked as to what what is it that you want to do today. That that is one thing. That one question I I said let's start a space where child has that you know is has that agency has that autonomy to participate in what is going on. That I I too have a say as to what I want to. Do. I mean, till till no, you see, two year olds and three year olds, they have a say. A lot of them have a say in structuring their day. Like my two year old, he he knows how he wants to spend the day. He would do something, go for a walk, and I go. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it would not work. It's not that everything that he wants really happens, but he has a say, uh, and that is important. But then. If when she starts going to a school at the age of three or four, that that thing will go. Now everything for next twelve years of the life has been decided by someone else, adults, and uh, you have uh, you can question, but you cannot question that structure that has been decided for you. You cannot question that timetable that has been decided for you, and. Diversity is very important, right? I mean, one of the things that I said is schooling is becoming synonymous with education, but there should be different spaces. Diversity is... Uh, so diversity, what are you... So different kind of educational spaces, having different flavors. Right. Not just one particular model that is applied, that is, that is applied across, but, uh, but, but different flavors. So I thought, if not for anything, just for the sake of diversity, let's start a space right. where um, children are given uh, freedom. They participate. They feel that we, we together with the uh, adults, we are running this space. Yeah. So, what? Tell us more about that space because I, uh, it's a little grove, right? Yes. So, a little grove. Uh, physically, we are based in a bungalow uh, in middle of the city. It's based in Sikandrabad in Hyderabad. <clears throat> there are about 30 children who come, uh, the youngest being six year old. And there are, sometimes there are also two, three year olds. And my some I'll take my son also who's two and a half. So um, the youngest being six and the oldest 17, 18 year old. Okay. And um, it works that uh, and, and there are three or four adults who are there who are there permanently and um, some and you when you come you'll also find some older students sometime coming and visiting and they'll be spending time you would also find parents coming and uh, doing something that they are interested in if you get an image yes it's like a community we call it a community learning center uh, 
for last few years we have been running it from 9 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock in the afternoon but because it's kind of informal sometimes children end up staying after 3 for some time also and then but it's basically at the time of school grove comes from one of the stories of buddha that when buddha used to go travel with his uh, uh, friends and followers uh, and when they would get tired then they would spend time in groves these and groves are like little forest in the middle of the cities where they would get shade they would get some respite and they would sit relax breathe and then move on so i thought it's the space is like a little grove for not just children but for adults for for me for everyone who comes there you come there and you can you can be yourself children who are not going to school uh per se who have uh, they who have chosen or whose parents have chosen for uh, different reasons they come to our space what sort of reasons are we talking about so in some cases the reasons are dissatisfaction with schooling the dissatisfaction that i talked about right. that uh, they are tired of this uh, uh, rat race Uh, that we put our children in they are tired of uh, the kind of stress full environment we are putting our children in in the name of education so they want they want children to experience enjoy learning and uh, so that's one of the reason and another uh, so a lot of people end up staying at little grove because of mainly this reason but the initial point of entry might be different so some we also have been running this place on pay as you wish basis basically parents decide how much you would want to contribute uh, we do give suggestions on the cost and things but but it's up to the parents and uh, there is a space for parents to um, even say that you know for next few months we will not be able to pay anything because we are undergoing this financial distress or something so there are uh, sometimes that is the reason why somebody would have suggested that this is a place you could go and then children come but then there are also government schools which are fee free yeah. fee free so some children from there would come and then uh, the, because just one of the because it's a small space and we are able to work with children and uh, a little bit more focused way parents see a certain change in having the children yes. a certain change uh, in children uh, not only in terms of uh, academic skills and things like that but behavioral changes at home now you know we uh, we the place we all run the place together so we it's only us children and us who do the cleaning right who, who do any sort of minor repairs maintenance of the place and right. and we talk about this also so uh, sometimes parents will observe these little changes at home that you know a child will start going and saying can i can i help you cut the veg can i can yeah. i help you do some cleaning things like that and then and then then they like the space that you no know, our children they want to go to the place in right. the morning they are excited to go and they are also learning some right what has been happening for last few years is uh, that at the start of the year in june uh, some we we'll, first we'll start say we start on 3rd june right um we'll spend all of us including some of the parents who volunteer we'll spend two or three days cleaning the space right uh, we'll clean the space set it up and every time we set it up we'll set it up differently so right. this room was being used for something now it is being used for something else and children participate and decide children for them it's their home it's uh, it's their home so they can structure they can book they can make build it in the way they uh, they are free to do that so two or three days we'll spend doing that and then after that uh, next uh, two weeks or something we'll be sitting together in smaller circles or bigger circles all together and just talking uh, as to what is it that we would want to learn this right. year so a 6 year old also would be sitting and a 12 13 14 and each child would be saying something different you know a 6 year old child knows that this kind of exercise is going to happen and she right. will come prepared that i want to learn flute i want to also learn maths 
I want to learn English. She's got her list, to do list ready. She's got right. her learning list ready. Things. A lot of, if there is a new kid, a new kid would be hesitant. So we'll, we'll say if you have, you know, you listen to other children and if you have something to say, you say otherwise, no, don't right. worry about it. And right. Enjoy the process. But some of them who have been into the process, they will be ready that I want to do this and they will also be ready with what I want to teach. Right. So there would be a seven, eight year old who would say that I would, I, uh, in May, I learned embroidery and I would want to teach that to the children. So then we write it down. We have a big board and we write it down. Diksha wants all these things. So by person, you yes. write down what yes. is there. Okay. By person, we write everybody's things, right. including, and then we also will speak. So I'll say right. that I want to offer physics and chemistry and right. music and art and carpentry and things. And I right. would like to spend this uh, this year what I would actually want to spend time learning theater. I would want to. So if somebody is offering, I would want to be part of that. Right. So we all will together participate in it. So in that process, what happens is uh, children see that uh, you know that that boundary for a it breaks. So breaks. They are not able to break it completely. It's not that there is a giver and a receiver. Break it completely. But then you know there is a fluidity that we all are learning. Right. And we all are also somewhere. Right. Contributing, teaching. Yeah. So basically, everybody writes down. And we we write down each and every person, no, whatever they. But then we have to now put it in a sort of timetable. So, for example, I I have offered science, maths. I have offered uh, guitar is something that I would want to teach and things. And then then from there emerges a sort of timetable, a broad timetable for the space. Right. Uh, uh, Anjali is going to come and offer chemistry on so and so dates, and that that is something that I work on. After I take all this data, then I go back home and sit and work. And sometimes children volunteer saying that I can I also work you know how to place it and it's a lot of work right. like you know putting everything together uh, catering to I would want to do this in the afternoon I would want to do this and so we try to set a sort of timetable broadly what happens right. and this keeps changing so it's not that now we have set it up and the year goes like that but it keeps changing I mean after two months for example I had said that I would want, I have an interesting book and I would want to read that in afternoon or a parent had said that, right? but the book gets over after right. two months and then now you have to fill that space. By that time something else comes up, right. somebody is offering theatre. Some of the elements of the timetable like maths, um, English and things like that, that remain, that does not change, those are some of the basic things, but other things keep changing. And so, is there a annual syllabus that you look to cover, or is it that what happens happens? I mean, how does that? How do you think about that? How do you? So, uh, because we are not, uh, we call ourselves community learning space. We are not uh, following any. We are not recognized. We are not following any board or right. anything. So we do not need to have classes. Right. And uh, and we can together decide for a. I mean, one of the interesting class that happened last year was one of the teacher Ram. He uh, said that I am very interested in exploring evolution. Right. And he had read a fascinating book on life of Charles Darwin. Right. And so he said, you know, I, I'll do that. We don't know for how many months it'll go on, but right. but I'll offer say two classes on evolution. Right. And now there is this whole group of 11 year old, 12, 13 year old who come and sit. Right. And that class went on for. Uh, almost the whole year. So the whole year, these children together as a group and sometimes someone else would also come and sit, just talked about various aspects of Charles Darwin's life and evolution and and, and then connecting evolution to a lot of things, not just evolution, but what was his uh, aim was to see what was happening at that time, what was the history, what was the geography of the places that he visited. So you, you study a lot of things when you are taking that topic. So we can, uh, I mean, we have that flexibility, and each person who comes in has that flexibility to play around with the with the curriculum, the way you teach. Uh, there is nothing uh, hard and fast that you know this place you should teach like this. Right. Uh, so if I am teaching physics or something, I will have my own way uh, of doing. Someone else comes and does uh, that; she will have her own way of doing it. The only thing is that uh, uh, children are empowered 
to give feedbacks right. so children when we sit together there will be you know from time to time or something we'll have sitting circles we'll all sit and we'll give feedback to uh, each other and so a child i think to a certain extent feels empowered to say that um, amit anna you uh, i liked your class but you know part of it became boring uh, when you were you i think you are not structuring it well or whatever she has as a feedback she is giving and then i have to uh, sometimes it's difficult when the feedback is too right strong for adults to take but then uh, but then we that's that's yes, that's also what we learn and that's how it goes so i remember it struck me last year i mean i was just visiting some schools and i remember it struck me is a good school is one where the school leaves shapes and leaves an impression on the child and a great school is one where the child leaves an impression on the school also so i feel a little bit like perhaps every school also aspires wants to be like the community learning center that you are running so what do you think holds schools back from becoming this way where the child has agency in what they learn i think one of the thing maybe size we are able to do this because we are a small group right. we have 30 children we have but if tomorrow we had uh, 200 children or something i think things would change mm. i think there is something about the size that uh, that is very important and schumacher talks about that in his book small is beautiful and and there uh, have also been studies done on this size but the, but that one factor i mean i could be all well intentioned and i want to do the same thing but if i had more than 30 40 children in my class then a lot of these things might not happen the way they happen right just the fact that we'll all not be able to sit and then even uh, but you know within schools also there was i don't remember the name there was uh, something some experiment that happened in us where within the school they tried to do this where within the school they tried to make uh, smaller circles and smaller communities of children uh, within a larger school and then they would try to do something that we are trying to do they would uh, create spaces where children would also have a say right and i remember i think somebody recommended that i read summer hill yes yes is that, is that also something that you yes i mean in towards when i was when i was traveling and when i was so i was visiting many places and i was also reading i mean just for summer hill was started in 1924 and uh, uh, it's it's a democratic learning space for children where uh, just like us i mean it's 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 one of the inspiration for us yes uh, inspiration for our space it's where where children have this agency a, a lot of places have come up in past many people have proposed this thing it's not a very new idea tagore right. talked about it tolstoy when he started something in polyana tried to do something uh giju bai badeka in gujarat uh, his fabulous book yes. divas swapna is is uh, is an inspiration another book toto chan uh, yeah. written in japan kobayashi tried to start something so there there have been and these are some of the known spaces i'm sure there the when i was moving around i saw just in india there were so many experiments that were done uh, in 60s and 70s so many of these small spaces were existing in different mainly in south i think uh, in different villages and things where people had come up with these small small spaces uh, which were doing things differently unlike uh, uh, regular school but a lot of the places don't survive they somehow either you know change over a period of time or but summer hill since 1924 till date i think it's one place that has tried to exist the way mm. uh while getting recognition recognize recognition from the government also that you know you are doing it this way they do face problems from time to time as what i know but but they are trying to exist yes